the way Osho has made spirituality and sannyas available for people at large, no master has done this in the past. He must have immense compassion and the will to help humanity. When Swami Govind Siddharth made the 16th Karmapad, he said, Now we have come to know that there is an incarnation, Rajnis, who is doing our job in India and the world. And we are very happy about it. The world will know him, but only a few people will realize what he actually is. He will be the only person who can guide properly, who can be a world teacher in this age. And he has taken birth only for this purpose. Please comment on this statement of the Karmapa and what he means by it. Yes, Osho, you are right. Osho has talked about other masters, their enlightenment, their contribution. One, but he has not talked much about himself. He became enlightened in 1953. That was a, not an ordinary explosion. That was a very, for that day he was waiting for his many, many life. Bhagavan said that I have been working for enlightenment from many, many lives. And it happened. Such a wonderful thing. But he kept it secret. He was a student and continued his study. Not for few years. He kept it completely secret for 17 years, till 1970, when he started sannyas. Then only he talked that he has become enlightened. He, he has given a date for Nepal in 1970 that he will visit Kathmandu. The date was three days. 19, 20 and 21st March 1970 and 22nd March he was supposed to go back to Jabalpur. Unfortunately that visit could not materialize uh, for so many reasons. It could not materialize because he has just left his job and uh, he has resigned from lecturership and he has no regular income. And I was a student and I was totally dependent upon my guardian. There was no Usho follower in Nepal in 70. So I was totally dependent upon my parents and they were already scared because I was following gurus and sadhu and sannyasi from my childhood. So they were afraid that I will discontinue my study and I will become a monk. So they were not interested in giving money for inviting. They didn't know about Osho. So they were not willing that I should invite a, another monk in the home. And I said, because I have done that mischief before many times and they were so, because only because of few thousand rupees, about five thousand rupees, neither he has money, he has resigned, and he had no, no monthly income, and I was a student, I was totally dependent upon. So we could not arrange, I could not arrange five thousand rupees. So that for that reason, he could not come to Kathmandu on that day, and later on, much later, we know that. That day was his enlightenment, 21st March, a very auspicious day. You know. But he has kept it secret. You know. So he didn't talk much about himself for so many reasons. But when he started sannyas in 1970, 26th of September 1970, in Manali, 
he started a new movement of new sannyas. And seven, eight people were initiated in this, that camp. After that, after starting the sannyas movement, he, he changed totally his working style. Before that, he was traveling all the time, all the time on the train or plane from one city to another city. That's why he had resigned from the job because it was not possible to take so much vacation. So he has resigned and he was traveling from Punjab to Bengal in the east and Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, all over North India he was traveling. Hindi speaking belt, because that time he was talking only in, in Hindi, not in English. So immediately after sannyas, he changed, he dropped, he cancelled all his program. He had a lot of program booked, he cancelled all program. And he said that now I will be confined to a place, a room. He totally confined himself in a Bombay, there was an apartment, woodland apartment, where he was living. So he totally confined himself in that apart three room apartment. I stopped all, cancel all programs of talk. And he was just coming for twice a year for conducting meditation camp in Mount Abu in October and March. So the, then he totally changed. He was his clothes. If you see his old picture, he was wearing lungi and kurta. But after starting sannyas, lungi and just shawl. But after starting sannyas, he started wearing white gown. And so many things changed. He, he was not available. It was difficult to meet him. But still, he was not disclosing anything about himself much. So Lama Karmapa, 16 Lama Karmapa, who has moved from Tibet and has settled down in Sikkim, in Gangtok, uh, Rumtek Monastery, a Rumtek Monastery. So there are three enlightened masters in Tibet who are head of one sect. La, Dalai Lama, Lama Karmapa, and Panchen Lama. So there are three Lamas, no? They are sit. So he is next to Dalai Lama. Karma Pai is next to Dalai Lama, popular. He is head of his own sect, but uh, Dalai Lama has also, Dalai Lama is to be also the head of the state, no? Otherwise, they were all equal. But Dalai Lama has a special power, he used to be also the executive power. So Karma Pai has uh, settled in the Rumtek Monastery in Gangtok. So one sannyasi from Bombay, Swami Gobind Siddharth, on his summer vacation, he went to Gangtok just to escape the Bombay heat. And fortunately, he, he came to know that uh, Karma Pai is there. So he asked for an appointment and he got an appointment and they had, they had a wonderful dialogue with, with, uh, with the help of a interpreter because Karmapa was speaking only Tibetan language. Uh, so there was an interpreter who used to interpret from English to Tibetan language to English for Gubin uh, <coughs> Siddharth. So then Karmapa actually disclosed so many things about Osho. Karmapa has never met Osho. He, there was, he came back from Tibet and the government of India asked him where he want to stay. Then he said, I want to stay in Himalaya. So he chose Sikkim, no? the uh, Rumtek Monastery. He had never met Osho. Uh, 
Ran Papa was not that time he was not speaking English and so he was totally uh, uninformed about Osho, about from material plane, but he knew everything from esoteric plane. So Karmapa disclosed so many, so many things about Osho that uh, Osho, few remarkable things which he said, which are still very few people understand. Uh, what Karmapa has said, very few people understand. The first thing he said that Osho is the greatest incarnation after Buddha. There have been many enlightened masters, but Osho is the greatest incarnation after Buddha. First thing he said, he is a Buddhist, but he said that Osho is the greatest incarnation. Second thing, he said that Osho will bring a new revolution in religion and his teaching can help the modern age. He said that our method, Tibetan method, is are very old and old words and difficult to practice for Westerners and also for the pe people who live in the city. So Osho will invent techniques, meditation and his teaching will be relevant to the 21st century. So that, that was his second statement that his uh, teaching will be for, suitable for the modern time. And then he revealed so many things that he was, his previous life was in Tibet and two life. His previous life was 700 years before. He left his body in 1230, just before this life. And before that also, about 200 years before that, he had also his one life in Tibet, no? And in both the life he was master of a sect. And he, in last life he has thousands of disciples, he has a big monastery, and he has thousands of disciples. Uh, and in Tibet there is a tradition that they save the body of Siddha uh, for future generation. So what they do, when the great yogi left his body, they make gold casket and preserve that body under the gold frame. In body, is, there's a special Tibetan methods, no? So that the body should not decay or smell and they make the same frame, golden frame, and they keep the body. So they uh, Karmapa said that there is a sacred place in Tibet where we, uh, we have preserved 99 body of Siddhas. And in that hall of, of Siddhas, there is a body of Osho also, of, of two life before, two life before. So that time he was also a master, although he was not fully enlightened, no, he became fully enlightened in this life, but he was self-realized and he was Siddha and he had a lot of power and he had invented many signs of third eye. So his body is preserved in a hall of Siddhas in Tibet. So, so many things Kamapa said about Osho. After that, there was a meditation camp in Ambarnath in Bombay and so many people asked these questions to Osho and whatever because Osho was, had not told anything about his previous life to us. So many questions were asked when Gobind Siddhartha came back he published his interview in a magazine that time a English Sanyas magazine so his interview was printed in that magazine uh, it was a by by monthly magazine. So in that magazine he narrated, he had written his whole interview and that created a sensation around the world, especially in the Osho disciples. We were not aware about so many things which Karmapa have said about Osho. 
So many questions were asked when he was in Ambarnath meditation camp, many questions were asked whether it is true or not to Bhagavan uh, approved whatever Kamapa has said about Osho. Bhagavan approved and then he said few things which is related. Uh, then one of the sannyasi in his trance, in his meditation, he went uh, with an astral body uh, to that cave uh, where the body of 99 Siddha is kept and is counted and he said that he was also in that camp. So he said that Bhagavan, my astral body has visited that cave after Kamapa interview and I counted your body is third, third body, uh, in 99 body. Bhagavan uh, said that, no, you counted from wrong side. My body is not the third body, my body is 97th body. If you count from the other side, is 97th body. So, so many mystical things. You are interested in mystical question. You have asked other mystical question. So, in so many mystical things revealed after uh, this interview and uh, many questions were asked and also slowly uh, said, uh, said few things about, although also kept many things sacred and he didn't talk much about his past life or esoteric things. Uh, he, uh, whenever we asked a question, he used to say, when, when Bhagwan came to Nepal, I asked that Bhagwan. Uh, Tibet is very close and I'm planning to visit Tibet. Uh, will you tell me where is that cave? <laughs> I want to visit that cave where the bodies of Siddhas are kept. Uh, Bhagavan said that these things are not told in words. You have to meditate and qualify yourself as one one sannyasi has already, his astral body has already traveled and counted the body. He said, you have to qualify yourself, meditate, and then you have to locate the place. By, by your meditation, I will not tell you, no. So that way he was keeping everything secret. He was not talking much about uh, his past life. Yes, Karmapa has said that the world we know him, but only a few people realize what he actually is. That happens always with genius. Very intelligent person, genius person are misunderstood by the contemporary people. No? They, they are recognized much after their death. Slowly, when Jesus was in physical body, and he was calling people, come follow me, come follow me, you know, traveling all over the uh, Middle East and, and uh, uh, Western Asia and calling people that come follow me, come follow me. Only 12 people listened to him. Only, he had to, only 12 followers in his lifetime, you no? Know? And now, more than two billion people are Christian. But it took 2,000 years. So when person like Jesus or Buddha or Osho is born, the con it is very difficult for a contemporary man to recognize him because he talks new thing and his style is also new. So people miss him. It is very natural. So that Karmapa has said that the world we know, but only a few people will realize what he actually is. He will be the only person who can guide properly, who can be a world teacher in this age. And he has taken birth only for this purpose. Yes. So Karmapa has said that our techniques, the Tibetan techniques, he was teaching Tibetan, still Dalai Lama and Karvapa and all the Lamas, uh, because they are, they are schooling in the Tibetan uh, techniques, so they preach the Tibetan techniques. But those techniques are 
very old and time taking and needs lot of discipline no so it is like bhagwan has taken nath brahma we do nath brahma meditation it is a tibetan techniques no nath brahma meditation but how they do in tibet in monastery they sleep early because there was no electricity all time and people used to sleep everywhere early and so in tibet they in monastery they sleep early when um, when sun sets they they finish their dinner and sleep and then they wake up in the middle of night 12 o'clock they wake up no that's a meditation time and from 12 to 3 4 from we call it brahma mood they used to meditate so this nad brahma meditation which we do here is only one hour meditation here but in tibet they used to do it for 4 hours no humming mm bhagwan has made it short and one hour and has added few things like uh, <coughs> moving your hand no so but in in tibet in monastery it is a 4 hour meditation 12 to 4 so nowadays people don't have patience to do it 4 hour for 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 hour and especially 12 o'clock is the time when people sleep these days you know it is the internet and pa- facebook and tv you know so how to wake <laughs> they wake up very late so this day, so karma passed that our technique will not suit in this modern time so osho will design new techniques for the modern time and it has actually happened uh, when osho moved to pune uh, when he was in bombay he has very few techniques uh, till 1974 the active meditation first active meditation was kirtan dhyan kirtan meditation the second was dynamic meditation then third was a tratak meditation so we had only three active meditation till 74 huh? still uh, uh, when bhagwan moved to pune and our first first uh, ashram was built and bhagwan has a fixed routine and he has comfortable room and he has not to travel and everything was arranged then he started creating new techniques the first technique immediately after when osho moved to pune ashram in march 74 a few weeks after he designed and gave us a very powerful technique kundalini meditation but when said the dynamic is for the morning and he will he was looking for a evening meditation trying and so he created a kundalini meditation that uh, dynamic he said is sunrise meditation and kundalini is the sunset meditation so wonderful technique kundalini meditation and then I was there in Pune when Bhagwan moved there in '74, and I was surprised that almost every week or every at least two, two or three techniques every month he was creating new techniques. Every week one technique. Very sur- surprising. You will be surprised to know. It is very difficult to believe. So all together, Bhagwan has given 600 meditation techniques. 600. No, nobody knows all the technique. No, I know in none. Uh, not in, uh, all, you cannot find all this technique in a one book. No, it is scattered in his ten thousand lectures. But some some of my friend has counted it, and he said that it's all together six hundred techniques. Bhagwan has created. So it is it is a big contribution when you and most of the technique created when Bhagwan was in Pune one. From seventy-four to eighty-one, the period of that seven years is is a golden period in Osho movement. Our meditation uh, reached a peak, and also popularity also reached a peak. And we have sannyasi all over the world. Within two hours, uh, two two years, Bhagwan moved to Pune in seventy-four March. and in the beginning there were only 18 people 
I was one of them who were leaving there permanently. And then within two years, there were 10,000 people from all over the world. So he became so popular in a very short time, very short time. Within two, three years, the Chansu auditorium was not big enough to accommodate, so new Buddha Hall was created. So as Karmapa has predicted, Bhagwan started pulling people from all over the world and he became very, very popular and he was designing every month some new techniques. Every month, not one, two, three, four, sometimes even more techniques and wonderful techniques, Raj meditation, Chakra meditation and uh, Nath Brahma meditation also came. So a lot of new techniques. Of, I do, I, uh, nobody knows all, even all the name of all technique and nobody knows more than maybe 50 techniques of Bhagwan. Uh, even the old, te- old meditation uh, teacher also don't know all techniques. So the, but all together there are 600 techniques designed by Osho. And slowly those techniques will become popular. Osho is becoming popular. Although there is a, uh, there is a conspiracy to damage his work and his communes has been closed in the West. His sannyas, these are confused and they have dropped mala. But it is very much preserved in Nepal. Uh, in, in its purest form. When Bhagwan was leaving Kathmandu in 1986, I was very sad that Bhagwan was leaving. Then, when Bhagwan, I wrote a, him a letter that Bhagwan, when he left for uh, <coughs> Greece, I was very shocked because I wanted the Bhagwan to distill it longer in Nepal. But I wrote him a letter that Bhagwan, uh, although we, are, we miss you here very much, but I promise you that we will keep your teaching alive and I will make my, I will try my best to make it popular, your message, and I will keep your lamp burning in Nepal. Then Bhagavan's answer came from <coughs> Greece that not only you will keep my lamp burning, you will keep my learning uh, burning in its purest form. Bhagavan added one word. You know, don't, uh, uh, <coughs> don't mix up things. No? Keep my teaching. He said that you will not only preserve my work, uh, you will not only keep my lamp burning, you will keep my lamp burning in its purest form. So, Bhagwan's lamp is burning in its purest form in Nepal. Nowhere in the world, this evening, when we are doing Kundalini, we are about 100 people doing Kundalini. No? It gives me such a satisfaction. Nowhere in the world, in order, even in camp, you cannot collect 100 people. Even in meditation camp, it's very difficult to collect 100. But in normal day, 100 people doing Kundalini and dynamic, uh, it is only possible in Nepal. It's not possible in any part of the world. So his camp is, his lamp is burning, it is purest form. As Karmapa has said, that people will recognize him very slowly. Only very intelligent people will understand him, but slowly he will be, his uh, message will be realized and more and more people, like when Buddha was born, only a few hundred people followed Buddha. Now, Buddhist, Buddhism is the fourth largest uh, religion in the world. Half billion people follow Buddha. As a Buddhist, but, but, uh, all, but Hindu also, they all f- uh, love and respect Buddha. So if you count Hindu and Buddhist all together, it will be more than 1.6 billion people are following Buddha. But it took 2,500 years, no? So, Usho will be also become popular like Buddha, but it will take time. It will not take that much time because we have social media, we have internet, we have Facebook. Uh, so, it will not take that much time. 
but uh, slowly, um, and it is our duty, it's duty of every sannyasi uh, to preserve his uh, teaching because there is a conspiracy to damage his teaching. You know, we all know um, that there is a conspiracy totally to da- close all his ashrams, all his communes has been closed down in the West and in his institution has been closed down in America, everywhere. But we have to do our duty, I'm doing my duty, and you have to also do your duty, and slowly the world will realize what Karmapa has predicted.